Welcome back. Now, the VIX is a really important indicator, if you will, to monitor, especially if you're trading future stocks or options. So I'm going to take you through how to analyze the VIX using top-down analysis. So before we get into the charts, important reminder that trading and investing can be extremely risky business. Therefore, it's your responsibility to evaluate any information, opinion, advice, or other content contained in this video. So let's take a look at this chart of the VIX, which is a monthly chart. Every single candlestick is representing one month of price action. Now, when you look at the most recent history, so again, in a monthly chart, it's still going to be quite a lot of time uh, data captured. You can see that we have been rising on the VIX or falling on the market since June of 2021. Now, when I say falling in the market, that doesn't necessarily uh, equate uh, the same way to the S&P and the Dow and the Russell and the NASDAQ and more. You have to look at them individually, but this gives you a guideline of what direction the market will move. And you can see prior to that, June 2021, back to the pandemic period uh, starting in March 2020, you can see the VIX was falling and that aligned with the stock market rising. All right. So that's a really simplified approach, but that's how you start with the monthly chart, get an idea of the bigger picture moves. Now you can see I have my RSI power zones down below, and they are extremely valuable in understanding what's called momentum behind the markets. And so here you can see that recently the RSI power zones on the VIX have been lifting up out of what's called the bull support power zone. And when that's the case, it suggests that the VIX is going to continue to move higher. Now, this is not going to be without its little ebbs and flows. So what you would do after a monthly analysis is come down to a weekly time frame. Okay. Now you can see that all that data we saw since the pandemic peak on the VIX is now shown individually in weekly bars with each month having four bars on average, depending on how the dates of the month are uh, going on the days of the week. The important thing is to look and see if there's any additional or different evidence that you're seeing here. When a trader writes into me and says, Hey, the weekly chart and the monthly chart are both rising or falling. That's, that's great. But you need to look at what's the layer underneath. So when I take a look at this information, what I see is that since the low here specifically on July 2nd, right? We're going to get more granular as we go down in time frames. Yes, it's been rising, but it has not been doing with a lot of gusto. It almost looks like a big base. I bet you've seen a lot of stocks that have charts that look like this, right? So here, what I'm going to do is going to find one of the most important levels on this weekly chart. And I'll be back in a second. So you can see here that what I have drawn is what's called the 50% retracement. Now, if you want to learn more about why this is important, and how to create for yourself and when to draw it, then you can look at my GAN book, Trading Methods of WD GAN. I have the second edition available to you. And you can dive deeper into my GAN courses like GAN trading patterns or GAN candlesticks. The important thing to understand is that as the VIX, as the VIX progresses here, if it does get up to that 50% level, that will be a really important marker um, within the context of the broad market. So again, if the VIX is rising, then the stock market is probably falling. And we're all sitting here um, in current times looking at the impending uh, drop in the stock market, potential recession, etc. Well, in the big picture, this gives you some perspective of how far down the market could correct and how far up the VIX could go before it hits a really significant level. Okay. Now this is not the only significant level here. There's more. So let's unpack this further. Let's go down to a daily time frame. Now in the daily time frame, what's really interesting is that when you look at the action off of that June low, so back in, uh, right here, July 2nd, 2021, Okay, you can see more detail that's unfolded. That's what will happen when you go down from a weekly to daily, because now every candlestick is representing one day of price action. And what I want you to do when you study the VIX is draw trend lines. They are really helpful on the VIX. Now I'll give you a little clue. Okay. Those of you who are my loss forecasting students or advanced loss forecasting students, think about the beginning steps of when you draw a forecast. There you have the beginning pieces of how to draw trend lines. Okay, a forecast is just a set of data you measure on your chart. That's the beginning of a trend line, whether it's been actually confirmed, meaning it has a third touch point or it's tentative, meaning it only has two points. 
So again, if you have my lost forecasting system, you should have some light bulbs going off about, hey, I can use these forecasts to start to draw trend lines, and I'm just going to demonstrate for you here. So with the current market action that's going on, I'm going to draw a blue trend line from this high to this high. And my lost forecasting students, you can put two and two together as to why, right? And then I'm also going to draw a trend line from this low to this low, but this one's going to be pink. And my colors have reasons, and again, I detail those in the loss forecasting trading system. So what I have done now is taken the lower high in the VIX from May 9th and the higher low in the VIX from May 17th, and I've now created a boundary, okay? I've created a zone that the VIX might chop around within, but the really important thing will be to be watch the edges and see what other data and patterns develop within the consolidation that might give us a clue as to which direction it will break out. So let's look at this today. As of right now, things are really tightening up. We had an inside bar yesterday on the VIX, and that was inside a candle that had a long upper shadow. So these are some of the things I talk about in my candlesticks course. Now, all of that is with the RSI power zones on the VIX also coiling. You can see that they've got this high here and this low here, this peak and this trough, and they're sort of just meandering between them. And they're kind of hanging out at neutral level, but also attempting to hold the bull support. Okay, there's a lot of evidence that either could pull bearish or bullish here. When that happens to you in your trading, when you see a lot of evidence that's both bearish, but then also a bear, a bullish, like you see both sides of the coin equally almost, that's how you know you're in a consolidation period or sort of a breather, a pause in the race, okay, for the market. So what I am also seeing here is that we came back to a very important level, and that is this old top. And again, I get deeper into this and how to trade these and gain trading patterns. But the fact that we held that old top from May, from April 12th, and have been consolidating is a sign that while there might be some short-term fluctuations in the VIX that pull it down, allowing the broad market to rise. Unfortunately, it does not look like the VIX party, the upside is over, which would mean that there's more weakness likely ahead in the broad market because weakness in the broad market is not a bad thing for you as a trader. It's an opportunity to still buy low and sell high. You just flip it around. You sell high first and then you buy low later. This works whether you're trading futures or stocks or anything else, okay? So with that, let's take a look at what's looking uh, interesting at the upside on the VIX chart, because we've got the support here, and be prepared for that. So there's several old highs back here, and there's a difference between an old high and an old top. Okay, my GAN students, you understand the difference. And what I really want to focus in on is these two old highs that are actually, uh, they're not old yet, they are still intact. And so if the VIX does break out above this blue falling trend line, then I think that there would be a uh, serious barrier to it rising at this level. So let's move the labels so that we can read both 37.52, 37.79. And remember, when we were on the weekly time frame, so I'm just going to hop back to that, we had this other big level here at 49.79. Okay, so this is how you get a roadmap from a longer term perspective down to a shorter term perspective. And guys, if you want to see this demonstrated that you can learn from on any market across any set of time frames. I do this regularly in monthly group coaching. I do this in advanced group coaching. And you may see this in what we have called tune-ups, something new uh, coming soon. So keep an eye on your email for tune-ups, like a tune-up of your car, I'm gonna tune up your trading. All right, so with that, you now have a process to refer back to to guide you through top-down analysis of the VIX, and those of you watching this video right now as I release it or close to it also have analysis on the VIX to watch for a potential break of this consolidation and how to use your forecasting methods from loss forecasting to create trend lines to be able to do just that. Awesome. Well, I look forward to hearing your comments. Remember to comment down below in the video, subscribe, like, follow, and I'll catch you next time. Sign up at the link to get my hot, timely, actual updates as soon as I publish right to your inbox.